Unlike other team-based professional sports, cycling doesn't offer prize money to its teams. Prize money is on offer at races, but that's dished out to the riders to share amongst themselves. For example, Geraint Thomas's recent Tour de France victory earned him 500,000 euros, plus 500 euros for each day he wore the yellow jersey. A handsome reward, but one that tradition dictates is shared between his teammates, with none of it going into his team's, Team Sky's, coffers. Boo hoo. So performance on the road doesn't directly translate into financial success for a team. Compare that to professional football, where the winners of last year's Premier League Manchester City cut £38 million, ignoring TV rights income, and Formula One, where motorsport icons Ferrari receive an estimated £70 million a year just for showing up. In the cycling world, a pro team's only source of income is sponsorship. The teams don't own stadiums, and money from television rights isn't shared with them either. The result is a system that relies entirely on sponsors, and one team in particular that has more sponsorship money than the others, Team Sky. The British team is the richest in professional cycling. Its 2016 budget was £31.1 million, with that coming from four sources. Title sponsorship, that's telecom giant Sky's contribution. Performance sponsorship, that's sponsorship from the roster of other sponsors the team has, like bike brand Pinarello, component giant Shimano, and Italian apparel brand Castelli. Race fees, paid by race organizers, and so-called value in kind. That's the value of goods and services provided to the team, which could include their bikes, for example. In 2016, established world tour rivals like Katusha and BMC were estimated to have not dissimilar budgets, around the £25 million mark, but the gulf quickly starts to widen as you move down the peloton. Belgian team Quickstep's budget was estimated at £15 million, Spanish team Movistar's £12 million a year, and Mark Cavendish's Dimension Data were operating on just £10 million a year. Remember, we're looking at world tour teams here. That's the highest level of professional cycling. Away from the big names, cycling teams operate on extremely tight budgets and many are struggling to survive. Continental Team, that's the third division of professional cycling, Team Wiggins, runs on just over £700,000 a year and many get by on much less than that. So Team Sky are the richest out there, but does that automatically translate into success on the road? Well, their results would suggest so, with six Tour de France winners in the last seven years. In short, their budget means that the team can attract the very best riders in order to dominate races. Sky spent 77% of its 2016 budget on riders and support staff, which means they have their pick of the very best riders. Take this year's Tour de France, for example, where the likes of world-class support riders Wout Pauls, Mikhail Kwiatkowski and Egan Bernal helped put both Chris Froome and Geraint Thomas on the podium in Paris. Sky is thought to pay Froome at least £4 million a year, and Thomas, who up until this year was Froome's chief domestique, around £1.5 million a year. You can expect Creato to be on similar pay to Thomas's. Sky's ginormous budget also means they can invest more than others into training, equipment and travel. The team is known for its no-expense-spared training camps and its so-called Death Star team bus, which accompanies them to races, providing riders and support staff with state-of-the-art, luxurious facilities while on the road at races. So Team Sky financial dominance is clear to see, but is it right? Could a salary cap be the answer to level the playing field? Some think so. Even UCI president David Lapartienne is in favour of the idea, saying that it would help stop richer teams controlling races by riding at the front all day, a tactic we see Sky use all the time at the Grand Tours. Or is it just sour grapes against a team experiencing one hell of a purple patch? After all, you would expect BMC to have done better over the last few years on their budget, right? What about sharing some television rights money with the teams, with the smaller teams receiving more than the wealthier ones? Would that make a difference? Surely it would make sense to reduce pro cycling's reliance on sponsors. Guys? <laughs>